log into gyroscopeme.com, the hottest online radio station in the world. GS Radio all day, all night. Worldwide. Powered by Gyroscope Media Group, LLC. GS Radio, the best internet radio station worldwide. worldwide. Providing the best in music, music. And talk shows. Go to www.gsradionj.com and check out the best internet station in the world. You're listening to GS Radio Internet Radio Station, powered by GMG LLC. In the beginning, there was Jack, and Jack had a groove. And after a while, a deep sleep fell upon him, and he went looking for a new groove. He began looking for a new nation, and it had to be a soulful nation. And he found it, and it was soulful house nation. And he saw a building. It was a tall building. It had ten stories. And he entered the building and got on the elevator and pushed the tenth floor, but it stuck on the eighth floor. And that's where he found his new groove. And he began to jack and jack and jack and jack. And he knew that this was it. It was Soulful House Nation on the eighth floor. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, laying down deep, J. Dan Dan, Soulful Hot Station, coming to you live from the 8th floor. <sighs> we got a great one today, we got a great one, I'm telling you. Let me just give you a quick overview of what you can expect today. Uh, you know, we're going to go back, our uh, last interview, we took a couple weeks off and we had Mijan, who actually just performed this weekend in Jersey, she's out of California. She was around, she's been around since the 90s in making house music. Um, we're all going to play, so go back and check that out. We're going to play the number one song going to the track source and the Thoughtful House category. Then we have uh, some featured hits. But you know what I'm super excited about is our special guest today, Casper Bernstein. <laughs> I'm super excited. I want to give Tommy Davis a big shout out for connecting us. That was a good look. Thanks, Tommy. I um, also, too, just want to um, um, let you know, after this portion of the show, we're going to go into the Shazam Free Zone. And the Shazam Free Zone, as you know, we play only brand new tracks. And you can listen to them for the first time. And we not only play it, but we say it. We say what it is. And you can decide whether you like it, whether you're going to make it a hit or not. So um, for those of you who are just getting on the on the, on the line here, also too, I want to give a big shout out to King T Finesse and Ariel Shante for doing our theme song. And hey, let's get to it. So we're going to play the number one song according to Track Source in this Soulful House category. That's by Dion Cole. Two names you're going to recognize, Terry Hunter and Teresa Griffin. And this one's called Where the Freaks At. Now, as usual, we're only going to play a little snippet because, you know, Facebook has this nasty, nasty little habit of shutting it down and muting us out. Chuck, are you ready to play the track? Thank you. 
ready, get ready, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Dan Dan, Soulful Hots Nation, coming to you live from the eighth floor. So listen, um, want to just give you just a few things that happened. Hey, listen, want to give some big shout outs this weekend. I know July 22nd in Asbury Park, you had Al Will put on, Al Will put on his event and he had a great, great event down in Asbury Park. Um, I had an event that night, but I couldn't make it. I saw the videos. Thanks for doing all the lives. Those are really, really powerful because there's so many things and so many times, unfortunately, that we can't make it to all the events. And those lives kind of take us there, at least get the flow of it. We turn our speakers up and, hey, we can vibe. Hey, M M Momo TV was, Momo TV was, uh, was the host. And then just a few of the DJs there um, were Shonda T, Naeem, uh, Aunt B, Mukadeen, and I'm probably forgetting someone, but hey, it's all in love. Then, a couple other things that are happening. This Monday in Lincoln Park, Jersey City, Tawande and T Smooth are going to be DJing at the event that Ricky Clark holds on Mondays. At Mondays in in Jersey City, Lincoln Park. Then, of course, tomorrow night you have Antoine Qua and SMB are going to be having uh, their event the Tuesday night, the Irvington in Irvington, the peace the peace dance. So that's always a good a good show, a good turnout, and a good look. Then on the 29th, you have Frankie Paradise is having a dance competition in Fulton Park Place. And the host is going to be Barry the Maestro. That's happening. Then also in Coney Island on the same day, the Boardwalk series. The Boardwalk. And they have DJ Naeem Johnson and Ceres. And it's going to be on the, from like, on, from 1 p.m. till 6 p.m. It's going to be on the 19th Street Pier. 19th Street, yeah. 19th, 19th, 19th Street. Um, next. For those Jersey cats, there's another big event, July 29th, and that's Lincoln Park. And that's the annual Lincoln Park event in Newark, in the Bricks. And Monique Bingham will be one of the highlights. And, of course, they have a whole DJ lineup, so that's going to be a big event. Hey, just want to give a couple shout-outs to Jihad Muhammad, who is in Croatia, doing what he does there, representing. And then, of course, uh, Mark Francis is in Greece. So those are a few things that are going on. If you have any announcements or anything you'd like to make, uh, hit me up and glad to do it. I'm just also to and just give another quick thank you to Chuck Roberts. You know him from in the beginning and he was kind enough to do that drop for us, which we open up with. All right. So listen, let's play um, this song, the number two song on your list there. And this song Let's see if our guest recognizes it. Anyone? As usual, we faded out. Hey, this is a little introduction because this is the kind of interview. This is going to be a bang interview. This is a this is a song here that, as you know, um, Casper Bernstein, who was our guest, was a collaborator on, was along with Jeffrey C. Now, here's what's exciting: is that many of you have been sweating to his music for a long time. Some of you may know it. And some of you may not know it, but the one thing that is for sure, when his music comes on, he bangs. And of course, you know that was bang. Anyway, so listen, let's bring up our special guest here, ladies and gentlemen. It is Casper Bernstein. Casper, how are you there? What's going on, Dan? How you feeling? Hey, I'm good. I'm super excited. Hey, I'm so, I'm so happy you, uh, you're, you're doing this. Hey, listen to this. 
Um, you can not only check us out, right now we're being blessed. We're doing about 2,000 live views a week. We're not only wow. here, of course, on um, on on um, Facebook. That's, you know, um, one of the spots. That's maybe the okay. least of it. But we're on the website. We're on Vimeo. We're on YouTube. So we're getting a lot of traction. And I just want to say, hey, thanks again for coming Oh, uh, my, my, you, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah. Well, listen. So, listen. Let's get started. You know, we like to do the easy stuff in the beginning. You know, so okay. just tell us a little bit about you. Oh uh, well, you said a lot. You know, in your intro. Um, mm -hmm. my name is Casper Bernstein. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a lot of aliases. Tommy jokes about that all the time. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But uh, I'm a DJ producer out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, uh, I'm also in a partnership with uh, Tommy. We go by a group, a name called Sync Mafia, which, you know, bang, um, came under that banner uh, mm. of Sync Mafia. Um, I've been DJing since the early 80s. Mm, okay. um, I've been producing since um, the mid-90s. Mm, um, wow. And not just house. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is, I started DJing as a house DJ. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in the eighties, you did everything. But um, you know, uh, I was prime. My heart was in house. Um, but my production career, oddly enough, started in hip hop. Okay. Um, it's, it's a it's a wild story to that. But yeah, so you know, I started DJing as a house producer, but I started producing as a hip-hop rap producer mm. um and you know then um, i got into um house production uh, in like the around 2010 i would say mm -hmm. uh, when i first started making um you know house tracks and stuff like that mm -hmm. um you know and i've known tommy since i was a kid djing like I said, back in the early 80s, and, you know, uh, when I got into production, um, you know, he started progress and, you know, the the, the growth of me. And, uh, you know, one day we were like, hey, let's, you know, let's let's do some stuff together, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, he, and he felt confident enough in where I was at that, you know, he was like, yeah, okay, let's go. Um, you know, my first stuff that I released on Quantize was under my name. Okay. Um, and then, you know, on uh, the Castle Burn, it was an acid house act. Uh, okay. My first release on Quantize was an acid house EP. Um, and then we linked up the Sync Mafia and, you know, the rest is history. Now, you mentioned you have multiple aliases. We'll, we'll come back to that, to that later if we have time. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> um, but now, how about, um, how about early music influences? Now, how early? Uh, we can go back to Once Upon a Time. <laughs> it's all good. Well, you know, um, my earliest musical influences uh, were P-Funk. Oh, um, yeah. You know, oh. a lot of people don't catch it, but the Casper moniker is an ode to Bootsy Collins. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, one of Bootsy Collison's aliases was Casper. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hear that on a lot of his records. Right. Um, I played bass as a kid. Mm. Um, I play bass now a little bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, so, you know, P-Funk, George Clinton, Bootsy mm. Collins, mm -hmm. um, Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of craft work, a sure. lot of the Euro Stuff, you know, craft work and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, all the funk artists, Slave, mm -hmm. um, Rick James, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that stuff from the seventies, um, from the records that I raided from my uncles <laughs> and aunts and, and grandparents and stuff like that. Right. Um, Barry White. I'm over here looking at records now. Barry White, Minnie Ripperton. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wow. just all types of stuff. Wow. Um, now, when you start getting into like the um, the house stuff, um, you can probably hear it in my sound. I'm a big fan of the early house stuff that was I had a raw 
a more raw sound to it mm. um, than the polish. A lot of the polished stuff that you hear today, like, you know, the Soulful House is very polished. Mm. It, it, it's very neo-soulish. It's like, you know, right. R&B with a 4 or 4 beat to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that stuff. Too. I love all forms of house, but my heart is really with that early underground, you know, bare bones sound that, you know, made us all go crazy mm. uh, when we first heard it. Right, right, right. You know, um, let me just give a couple shout outs here. Momo TV is in the house. Momo Rose. My sister, I mean, my sister, my blood sister is in the house. Hey, hey, sis, how are you? Okay, um, so let. how about this now? So how about some of your, well, you kind of mentioned that, but how did you get into house music? Like, okay, now, now here's what's interesting, is you mentioned hip hop, you mentioned funk. Um, I, I would say, to a DJ or to a person, most people that are into house have hip hop and or funk in their background. So true, I, I, true, true. It, it's true. Yeah, I, I hear it all the time. So how did you make? I'm going to say, for lack of a better way of putting, the official leap into house music. As a producer, um, as a DJ who says, you know what, I'm going to focus on the house because you have well, that. Mm -hmm. Well. I'm a, I'm a, we got to go all the way back for this to make sense. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. as I stated before, um, when I first got into DJ, mm -hmm. officially as a DJ, I actually was DJing before I actually started calling myself a DJ mm -hmm. because I DJ all of my parents and uncles' parties. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, not house, but that was funk, you know, R&B, soul records and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, when I graduated from high school, um, that's when I bought my first, you know, DJ setup mm -hmm. and, you know, started to buy records. Now, it just so happened that that was around the same time that I started going to a club here in Baltimore called Odell's. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Odell's um, was uh, like the beacon, uh, well, one of the beacons of house music here in uh, Baltimore. At the time, um, I had to go to, like, the Thursday night, but I think it was college night or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then another club opened up here called Signals. Um, okay. You know, so we had Odell, we had Signals. Um, then Wayne Davis had Fantasies. Um, mm -hmm. And then he opened up the paradox. So all of these clubs were like where we got our house music fix. And, um, you know, <laughs> so in the beginning, um, I was playing house music. I wasn't really a big fan of rap and hip hop um, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, house and disco, um, that was my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really get into... So that was when I first started DJing, mm -hmm. all right? So then I went into the military. Mm -hmm. um, I went into the military. I was overseas in Germany. Um, I was doing some DJing over there in Germany. Um, that was the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, overseas in Germany is when I got started in music production. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that that started was I had a drum machine. Oh, okay. Um, it was a lot of cats over there from New York. They rapped. Mm -hmm. um, because we were in Germany, uh, we used to have like a lot of talent shows and stuff like that. Um, so they would want to be in a talent show and rap. And they started to come to me to make beats for them. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, that was like my kind of like entryway into like production. Mm -hmm. um, when I left Germany and I was down in North Carolina at Fort Bragg, um, I started to meet some cats down there that was in production. Mm -hmm. And um, they had samplers. They had the EPS 16 Plus at the time. Uh, I think the ASR 10 was just coming out. Um, so one of the dudes that I was kicking it with, um, 
he sold me his EPS 16 plus so that he could upgrade to the ASR 10. Um, so that, that was like my, and I think that was around, um, 93. Okay. Um, so that's when I first really jumped head into production and sampling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I bought me a SP-1200, so I had the SP-1200 and the EPS, and then I had the ASR-10 with the SP-1200. Mm. Um, and like I said, all this time, I'm making hip-hop beats, you know, for rappers. Okay. Um, I'm flying out to Oakland, um, you know, selling beats to Oakland rappers out there, LA rappers out there underground. Um, I'm doing this all the way up until about um, 2009. Mm -hmm. um, I'm knee deep into hip hop production, you know, trying to be the next Dre, mm -hmm. uh, the next Pete Rock, uh, the next DJ Premier. Mm -hmm. um, and so around 2009, I had started to get back into DJ. Um, mm. And me and a friend. Uh, we were holding a happy hour on Fridays. Um, and it just so happened that that happy hour that we were having led into a house music party that was being hosted by DJ Biscuit. Oh, okay. Um, so DJ, so the same club that we were having this happy hour at, um, from, I think like six o'clock to nine o'clock bled into um, DJ Biscuit's house music party, which started at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I would sit around and um, like I said, I hadn't dealt with house for a minute. Cause I was going to tell you, I was, I was into my little hip hop thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, by being there, being exposed to Biscuit's party, it re-exposed me to house music. Um, but like I said, it was like this new house music, this soulful house music that was very polished, very clean, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of vocals and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I was like, where's the stuff that bang at, you know? Okay. And so um, I was like, it kind of reignited me to get back into house. It started with just DJing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started, you know, um, so what I was do at that point like an hour before, 45 minutes before the end of our happy hour, I would start to play house music. So it would be a cleaner transition mm -hmm. um, from ha happy hour to Biscuit's happy hour. Um, as people started to come in and hear me playing house, they wanted to know, of course, who I was. Who was this cat that's playing house? We, we, he's not really, he hasn't really been on the scene. Um, so that got me kind of reintroduced to the house scene. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I, I can't find any records that really sound the way I want them to sound. It fit my style of how I want to play. So I started to make my own joint, mm -hmm. um, and incorporate them into my sets and stuff like that. And so that's how I kind of got back into house, house music, you know, playing house music and, uh, house music, you know, as far as, uh, production wise. And, you know, I started to transition from, you know, uh, making hip hop to making house. And, you know, it was kind of like a 360. Mm -hmm. I went from being all house to all hip hop. And then I went from being all hip hop back to being all house. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of how I kind of segued and, and got my feet back into you know, the house music scene and house music production and DJing and all that. Where is house music going? Where do you see it headed from your standpoint? That's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. This is my this is my take on house, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and I had this conversation a lot with other DJs, you know, other dancers, you know, Tommy, um, House has been around for, you know, lack of, a, you know, for the lack of arguing a, a specific date, a specific year since the early 80s. You know, you could mm -hmm. pinpoint it to maybe 83, 84, 85 when the mm -hmm. first house record 
was on vinyl or whatever have you. But, you know, for those of us that were around um, when House first started to form um, as an art form or whatever, you know, we are, you know, in our, you know, late 40s, early 50s, late 50s, some of us, you know, Tommy, you know, he's in his 60s or whatever have you. So, you know, we're, we're, we're aging out. Um, one of the things I say is, you know, I, I, I look at house and rap as like kissing cousins. They kind of came up together. Mm-hmm. You know, rap, you know, they just celebrated their quote-unquote 50th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Um, but the difference between rap and hip-hop is that rap has found a way to keep reinventing itself. Um, and, and, and to still stay youthful, you know, every 10 years or so, you know, rap switches up and the, the, that, that new generation, you know, has their own form of what they see as hip hop, you know, mm-hmm. hip hop today, mm-hmm. is nothing like the hip hop that we had mm-hmm. and, you know, the eighties and nineties and stuff like that, but it's still considered hip hop. Right. And it, and it, it, it has continued, you know, where they thought rap would die out within 10 years. Here we are 50 years later and mm-hmm. rap is still going strong. I don't see where house has been able to, at least not our house culture, not talking about the house that you see at the EDM festival right. and stuff like that. Um, but the house as we know it. Um, has had a difficult time uh, reinventing itself, you know, bringing in youth and a youth culture. Um, and I think we have to do a better job at that. Mm. Um, yeah. Is able to keep going. So, you know, encouraging the new up and coming DJs, the young DJs. Um, the young producers and stuff like that, because we got to keep this thing going, mm-hmm. and uh, we don't want it to right. age out with right. us. You know, mm-hmm. um, house needs to. You know, long after we're gone, if we don't do something now to keep it going, it's going to age out with us. Mm-hmm. And you know, I would hate for that to happen. Well, you know, every generation has their music, and you made a really good point: is that with hip hop they've found a way to make it, I'm going to say, age-appropriate, for lack of a better term. Right, you right, know, right. Um, if you look at most of the house music events, as we call house, which is soulful house, which is the original house music, and EDM and techno and tech house, and all those are really descendants of the original right. sound. You know, they, put it this way, They've been able to reinvent it in a sense, but not necessarily in the way that we would listen to it and, and attract that younger audience. So let's say, for example, right now, um, EDM is a, is, a, is a descendant of house, and that appeals to a different group. So that's, 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 a, um, that's an adjustment in the marketplace, but... Going back to what we talked about earlier, we really have not, on a scale as large as as I believe we should, made it the sound that we make. Like we haven't bring, brought in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of younger people, and and right. that's true. Um, you know, I, I, um, see, now, you know what else happened like that? At one point, Motown was very big. But that mm-hmm. went the way that I'm not saying people don't listen to it. You can't play it at a party, um, but that's gone the way to water buffalo. I mean, if right. if you, I mean, not extinct, but you understand. I mean, if you look at hey, let's 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 look look at other art genres, rock and roll. Rock and roll is is not as big in the mainstream like it was. I mean, if, like it if was, you, right? yeah, if you look at. Some of the video footage, let's say, of uh, Bruce Springsteen or Rolling Stone, those mm-hmm. those are mostly people around their age, and and you know, um, and you're right. We I don't know. We just really I'm not saying we don't get younger people come, but 
they haven't ab- embraced it like they have hip hop, which has been going strong right, for 50 right, years. Right. It's not back down. It's not falling off. If anything, it's growing. Um, so, 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 good point. Hey, let me ask you this. Um, by the way, Tony Gray is in the house. Tawanda Gray is in the house. How you guys doing? Hey, folks, share, share, share. Um, you can get us in multiple formats. You can get us here. You can get us on Vimeo. You can get us on Twitch. You can get us on the website. You can get us on YouTube. So we're in multiple places right now. Um, okay, so what made you... Well, you kind of said that, but... name. So for the people <laughs> who <laughs> have had... The misfortune, and I say misfortune, of not knowing about you. Name some of the mm-hmm. tracks that they have sweated to that you've done. Uh, well, of course, earlier you played Bang Now. You played the Jeffrey C. Mm-hmm. Um, collaboration mm-hmm. of Bang. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was the original Bang, mm-hmm. um, both of which um, the original Bang went to number two. Mm-hmm. Um me and Jeffrey C's collaboration went to number three. Mm-hmm. Um, there is the, um, you know, uh, I did a track last year. I did a couple of tracks with Richard Burton mm-hmm. last year. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them was a Christmas track. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one was a remake of um, a Teddy Pendergrass song with him and um, Trudy. Mm-hmm. Um, that we released yeah, last year. Um, I did a remake. Um, it's not Soulful House. It's kind of more um, Tech House. And that was earlier this year with... Um, with uh, 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 What is that? They, they're going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> Slick Control. Slick Control, um, okay. So Lost and Faded. Mm-hmm. Um, Lost and Faded with the number three on mm-hmm. the house charts. Mm-hmm. Um and a, fair, a lot of underground joints. Um, so those are the joints that came out like on Quantize. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to my band camp, though, mm-hmm. a lot of underground joints that, you know, unless you're a band camp type of DJ that goes there to find those hidden gems you may not know about. Um, you know, some DJs do band camp. A lot of DJs stay on track source and stay on beat port and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of gems um, that you can find on Bandcamp, mm-hmm. um, and that you know other DJs have found on Bandcamp, and you may have heard them play those joints, and you may not even know that you know I had something to do with. But mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you've also played in some other places. Um, yeah. Name some of the places that you've played in is there any place on your bucket list um earlier this year i was in japan mm-hmm. um i was there for a week like oh. a little mini tour mm-hmm. um played like five parties in japan that was a crazy experience mm-hmm. um it, it it really amazed me to see how that they were in house and you know to 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 the point of what we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. about house and youth mm-hmm. like the the scene over there was a useful scene wow. like it was when we were kids and our you know teens and 20s you know so it was very high energy um, a lot of dancing going on they still popping and locking and <laughs> you know Spinning around on the floors. <laughs> so the energy was crazy in Japan. Um, and I was I was really surprised. You know, we talked about band camp and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they really, they, in Japan, because of their culture, they're really into, like, showing respect and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the DJs, you know, you, you know, you had your little DJ lineup and everything. So the DJs that would come on before me to show, like, respect, they mm-hmm. would play, like, some of your joints. And they would be playing joints. And I'd be like, yo, how do you even <laughs> know about that record? <laughs> you know? Oh, so goodness. that was crazy. Um, last year, um, I was in London. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, uh, quantize. Uh, they had their 10 year anniversary over in London last year. Uh, mm-hmm. So that was a great experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, other places in the States, um, Florida, Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, Philly, um, like, you know, l- underground stuff. stuff. Um, as far as bucket lists, mm-hmm. one place I really want to play is Ibiza. I just have oh, this fixation yeah. with playing in Ibiza. Mm-hmm. Um Speaking of Ibiza in Europe, like I said earlier, uh, when I was stationed in Germany, Mm -hmm. uh, I played a few clubs over there to include um, clubs that were on base, like the NCO club and the officers club. Um, But I played at a few off-base spots, too. You know, um, where I was stationed at, Bomb Holder, um, Mm -hmm. is in the southern part of Germany. And we were, like, 30 minutes from the French border. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I played at a club in uh, a spot called Saarbrücken, uh, mm. which is like right on the border. Um, half of it is German and half of it is French. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you know, so, mm. but yeah, as far as bucket list, um, Ibiza, um, mm. Miami. Okay. Um, Canada, oh. um, yeah, wow, Green. Russia, and the only Russia. reason I say Russia is because Tommy was telling me about one time he played in Russia. So you played in Russia, <laughs> and you're like, and he told me these stories about when he was in Russia, you know, and he had to stay in this hotel because he was like the only black guy over there and stuff like mm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that would be, you know, that would be cool. Uh, to you know, go, but you know, just travel, just you know, uh, I, I, I sometimes, you know, I look at you know, Croatia and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, I think Spain, which is over in Croatia and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all those you know, crazy places, um, that Spain gets to go. I know you mentioned earlier, Jihad, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Francis, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm working on it, I'm not, I'm not there yet. You know, I've done my little couple, you know, overseas gigs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for the phone to start ringing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so I'll be plane hopping just like those guys. Okay. You know, I I will tell you that, again, most DJs love playing here. Ibiza is, seems to be the number one spot that people want to get to. And then uh, just playing overseas is a big thing. Now mm-hmm. you know. Um, now here, here, here's my my next question. How about artists and produce and or producers that you'd like to work with and or collaborate with? Are there any out there? And 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 I'm and I'm just gonna say it this way too. I'm gonna add this part to it. Now one of the things that you have the ability to do, which most of us don't, is if you hear a song and you like it, whether you put it out or not, you can. You can <laughs> make a house tracker. I mean, you could take Mary Had a Little Lamb. And you could do something with it. I mean, mm-hmm. is there is there anybody that you want to work with? Uh, whether you can work with them physically, um, remix something, or a producer you want to work with that you haven't or you like their work? Yeah. Or, well, you know. um, I do have some submissions into. Crystal Waters. Oh, okay. Um, and I actually have the songs done. Like, you know, I don't know if they'll ever see the light of day or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I have done uh, a couple of joints uh, with Crystal. And, you know, hopefully uh, we can make something happen with those. Mm-hmm. Um, Monique Bingham. I mm-hmm. love her voice. Mm-hmm. I love a lot of her music. You know, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. You know, to get with, like I said, I did some records with Richard Burton and Fruity, mm. um, Aaron K. Um, I love his voice. I I love, like I, I mentioned earlier about Prince and Aaron K. Reminds me so much of Prince with the yeah. falsetto and stuff okay. like that. And actually, wow. um, me and Tommy had sent some tracks to Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and that may be something that comes, you know, the fruition or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as producers that I would like to work with, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a I'm a big big fan of, of Louis Vega, but who mm-hmm. isn't? Right. You know, um, who isn't a fan of Louis Vega? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Kenny Dope. Mm-hmm. You know, separately and together. You oh, know, yes. masters at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big fan. I like. I love. I love jihad stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of drums. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, right. so I, I, a lot of jihad's track mm-hmm. just have incredible uh, percussion breaks in them and stuff like that. Yes, uh, love that. Um, mm. Who else? Who else? Um, I like Oscar P's music. Oh yeah, um, he's making some Mr. serious noise, right? Yeah, Mr. V, I would love Mm -hmm. to do a track with, you know, my music with Mr. V doing his little talk thing over top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, The same thing with Mike Dunn. Okay. Um, And I I, I actually have some records in the stash Mm -hmm. where I'm talking over top of them and I like a Mike Dunn, Mm -hmm. Mr. V type uh, thing. I haven't released them or anything like that. But, you know, I have some. I play them at parties from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't released them yet. Um, yeah, so you know, those are like some of my bucket lists. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah. Well, I heard black s- coffee. I love sure. black coffee stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love the Ama piano sound. That's not oh. quite house. Um, it's kind of mm-hmm. like house, but at a, it's kind of like the old style of house. You know, mm-hmm. when house first came about. It was down there in that 120, 118 right, right. Um, BPM. Mm-hmm. Um, Ama Piano was kind of like 112, 113, mm-hmm. but it's still that, you know, 4-4. Four, four. Mm-hmm. It's just slower. I right. love that Ama Piano sound, mm-hmm. and, you know, it would be cool, uh, you know. And like I said, once again, that's something else um, that I've taken – you know, the Ama Piano, the, the, the instruments that they use in Ama Piano, mm-hmm. um, I've taken that and, and kind of like their construction and uh, made some tracks with that sound, mm-hmm. but more up tempo in the 123, 124 BPM range. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm working on an EP, mm-hmm. um, probably coming out before the end of the summer where I have some tracks on there. You know, they have a I'm a piano-ish type sound to it, but it's, it's more geared towards, you know, a house dance floor mm, okay. as opposed to, like, that Afro beat type dance floor. Got you, got you. Um, hey, I want to just take a few minutes so we could talk about the Baltimore scene, what's trending, and, mm-hmm. you know, and Baltimore's had a long connection club and house and what you take um baltimore house back in the day compared to the day and um and and what's trending now in that scene um well like i said back in the day um when uh when when, when house first hit the scene it was a limited amount of house records anyway mm-hmm. um so I, w- I would say the house scene everywhere was probably a little bit similar because you only had a finite amount of music to to play um, in those in those early years, and, and you know now you have an infinite amount of music, and, and different regions have kind of taken on you know different tones. Um, here in Baltimore, overwhelmingly is 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 kind of like really into like that garage sound of house the the, the neo with the you know mm-hmm. neo soul like i said with the, with the neo soul type sound with the soulful mm-hmm. melodies uh, you know the lush vocals and stuff like that it, it just to get an idea with a lot of the stuff that come out of quantize you know they have that very mm-hmm. polished produced sound uh mm-hmm. everything that comes out of quantize is perfect you know yeah um, whereas, you know, me personally, I'm more of a fan and Tommy too, even though he's the president mm. of quantize and stuff like that, deep down inside, Tommy really likes a dirtier, grittier, more unpolished sound. Mm. And I think that's when we formed sync mafia, mm-hmm. um, that's how that kind of came about because we both have that love for that unpolished 
sound. And that gives him an avenue to put out more music like that mm -hmm. um, because it's not under the banneker of Tommy Davis. It's under the banneker of Sink Mafia. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Club music, you know, that's out. That's the, that's, you know, regardless of what's going on. I, 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 are, you, are you in Jersey or New York? I'm in Jersey. I'm in, You're in Jersey, Jersey, New York. Proud so, New Jersey cat. Funny thing. So, <laughs> you know, I know Tamil, DJ Tamil. Tamil, okay. Uh, so, uh, and he was just down here um, a couple of weeks ago um, because we had Baltimore Club Music Day down here. And Tamil came down. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a discussion about, you know, how Jersey Club, you know, evolved from Baltimore Club. Right. And, you know, he, Tamil here tell you that, you know, when he started the whole Jersey Club music up there, he used to come down here mm -hmm. and get Baltimore Club records and take them back to New Jersey. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then he evolved. Jersey Club kind of took on a sound of his own, kind of like Baltimore Club. And in, in the beginning, Baltimore Club music was really, um, like ghetto Chicago house music mm -hmm. and, um, you know, your music, you know, uh, music coming out of Europe, Italian disco, you know, stuff that they would sample and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after a while, uh, we kind of found our own little um, direction of, you know, club music. And, you know, a lot of that uh, probably could be attributed to, um, you know, DJ Techniques. Mm -hmm. um, he came out with a record, you know, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if we could say what it was called, D-Control. I mean, you can imagine what the D stands for. Okay. Um, and in that record, you know, technique invented the boom, 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 boom. So right. that all started with that record, and that kind of became the sound uh, for Baltimore club music and yes. is the sound for Jersey club music right now. Yes. And, you know, that that sound is becoming the sound of commercial music right now. Um, you know, a lot of the artists coming out right now are coming out with, you know, Jersey Club records mm -hmm. um, or Baltimore Club records, depending on where you are, you know, up and down the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, but they aren't using club music producers to make those records. You know, um, you know, those they they're using the, the regular, you know, hip hop producers, you know, they have the names and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they go in the studio and they make a record that boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So they're capitalizing on the sound, uh, but they aren't giving any credence or paying any homage uh, to the people that really created that sound, uh, whether they be in New Jersey or whether they be in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been saying for years that, you know, those DJs and producers, even house music, you know, um, house music had a run um, commercially a couple of years ago where, where you know, rappers and R&B singers were coming out, you know, rapping and singing over house-type beats. Mm -hmm. Drake Right. You know, he mm -hmm. had a whole album, you know, where he was rapping and doing his little singing thing over house track. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, granted, a lot of those tracks were made by, you know, a cat named Gordo, who is mm -hmm. from the DMV area. Um, mm -hmm. He does, uh, he's really known more for making techno mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the EDM style of music than he is than he is for making house mm -hmm. um but you know i just think that you know if these commercial cats uh really want to have that sound they should dig a little deeper um yeah. to get some of the, the the cats that really have been in the trenches mm -hmm. uh you know shout out to beyonce i know mm -hmm. the house community had a fit yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they were up in <laughs> we <talked> arms. About <laughs> they were up in arms when Break My Soul came up. I personally <laughs> thought it was a cool joint, not uh -huh. something that bang bang, but uh -huh. it was a cool joint. 
But, you know, shout out to her for reaching out to Terry Hunter mm -hmm. uh, for the remix. And believe it or not, if you read the credits and the liner notes of that album, and I'm a big fan of that because we're going back to the vinyl days. I was always, oh, nice. whenever I bought an album, I'm always pulling out the sleeve to mm -hmm. see, you know, who produced it, you know, who the musicians were, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. If you go to the credits of mm -hmm. that Beyonce album, you will see a lot of house names, mm -hmm. you know, that contributed, uh, you know, not just Terry Hunter, um, but, you know, Honey, uh, mm -hmm. Honey Dijon is on okay. there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a lot of like if you actually took the time to read the line of notes, she did reach out uh, to some of the people that are in the house community to create that album. So I gotta give her props for that. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of you know big name artists are doing it. They're just using whoever you know has mm -hmm. a name out there and they're saying, "Hey, make me a house record." You know, right. or make me a club record. She actually reached out uh, to, you know, the people that are actually making that music um, to create that album. Right. Now, if you listen to Break My Soul, it's like she sampled Robin S. Too. Yeah, yeah. She sampled um, that, which is, you know, which is good. I, huh? I don't know if she sampled it or if she reinterpolated it. <laughs> You know, which is a which is a term they you know if you if you if you're one of the if you're into like sampling and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the ways you know once they started cracking down on sampling, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the ways that cast the sample kind of got around mm -hmm. having to clear samples. So instead of sampling from the sampling from the record. Um, you would find somebody to play that sample or replay that sample. Right. Um, so the, the 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 keyboard that that made that sound for Robin S. It's a keyboard that you can still get. Mm -hmm. You know that mm -hmm. sound is still on that keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, so and you could go get that keyboard and recreate. You know that 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 sound that's on a Robin S record. Now mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what she did mm -hmm. or if she sampled it. You know that's up, that's up with the beat. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it, it, it is definitely very Robin S ish. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned um, Richard Burton. By the way, we're gonna have Richard Burton is gonna be our guest next week. Oh, side. okay. Yeah, so I'm right. excited about that. Yeah. Now, but yeah. you've worked with Richard Burton. You've uh -huh. worked with Ed Ramsey. A lot of people don't know you had a yeah, tape. Yeah, shout out to Ed. Yeah, I just had this record with Ed earlier this year. Ed Ramsey. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't. Of course, Jeffrey C., Tommy Davis. And then a lot of people don't know that you had your hand in, in a mix with Ron Hall. Talk to God about it also. That is that But is you correct. were doing some yeah. some 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 spoken word on it it sounds yeah. like yeah and then um and then also you're part of the sync mafia which is with tommy davis so how did these collaborations come about give us give us the quick and dirty how did this come about um well start with tommy because okay. that's the relationship i had the longest like i said i've known tommy um probably since i was 17. Mm -hmm. um tommy used to work in a record store called metro stereo mm -hmm. um if you were trying to, well, really any type of music, but especially house music. Uh, if you were buying house music, Metro Stereo was where you went to. Um, Tommy was the DJ, you know, salesperson in there. Um, he had, you know, two turntables and uh, the Newmark mixer. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar sure. with the Newmark mixer. Absolutely. That had the, that had the sampler one. on it. Right. So you would go into Metro Stereo. Tommy would be doing all his Tommy thing on these records. And as he's doing his Tommy thing, you're asking him, what record is that? And so he's pointing that, bop, 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 bop. And you get these records home, and they sound like garbage. <laughs> because you can't play the record like Tommy was playing it. And you know, Tommy, he's sampling and he's playing two records that he playing little snippets. He's not playing the whole right. record. He got one little snippet that he's playing and he's looping that and <laughs> all that. So, yeah. you know, I've known Tommy for a long time. Um, 
when they started Basement Boys, I was in the military at the time when the Crystal Waters record came out. Mm. Um, when I came home, I had ran into Tommy and Teddy. Um, but like I said, I had to go back. I had came home on leave and had ran into them. I was home for like a month uh, in December, I think of like 91 or something like that, mm -hmm. or maybe 92. And I had ran into them. Um, and when I came back to Baltimore permanently, I tried to be a part of Basement Boys, but they turned me down. Uh, mm. I talk about that all the time. Tommy <laughs> and Teddy, they turned like, me down. You like to <laughs> let them know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I rub that in their noses every once in a while. Um, but, yeah, so like, I've known Tommy forever. Um, you know, he's watched me, you know, grow up. He's watched me grow as, you know, a producer, a DJ, and all of that. And, you know, everybody has their time. And when he felt as though the time was right, you know, he embraced me and, you know, brought me into the fold, introduced me to Spin. I had known Spin peripherally, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know him professionally and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, introduced me to Spin. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned a, a great deal uh, from Tommy about arranging records. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've learned a great deal from Spin then about um you know engineering mm -hmm. uh like i said then he's is he's a very he's a stickler um mm -hmm. uh, you know for things and, and you know i would send records to spin and, and spin would hurt my feelings sometimes <laughs> like yo how long you been doing this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah tell yeah me. but you know that 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 helps you to grow you gotta have thick skin mm -hmm. you know in this mm -hmm. business um mm -hmm. You know, and it was all out of love. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how that's how I got into you know the relationship with um, Tommy and Spill. Now Ron Hall, aka Dookie Man. Okay. Um, I didn't know that's that. a that's a whole different story. Dookie Man is a club music pioneer mm -hmm. uh, here in Baltimore, and he's like the go-to guy um, for anything production wise whether that be hardware or software mm -hmm. here in baltimore city um so you know when i was getting into my serious you know production mode of you know as far as house music is concerned and you know things that kind of evolved from you know the mpc and the asr 10 days mm -hmm. and everything was starting to be software based you know mm -hmm. pro tools logic and you know all you know, manner of software. Mm -hmm. Dookie was the guy that I turned to, you know, mm. um, to get the software and, you know, stuff like that for me to be more, you know, on a modern side of music production uh, mm. as far as software and stuff like that. Now, mm. the, 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 the record that we kind of had together, it kind of started out, so, you know, Dookie... Really, it started out as the acapella, mm. and um, Dookie Man, a lot of us, with a lot of other DJs here in the city, uh, you know, we're in various Facebook groups or whatever have you. Uh, so Dookie was like, "Hey, you know, I got this acapella that I made," mm. okay. and it was kind of like, "Yo," it was like a contest, really. Um, Let's see who come up with the dopest track or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, me, Dookie, another cat here in the city uh, called King Tut, uh, you know, great mm -hmm. um, DJ, producer. Um, you know, we had came up with versions of it. And we were so at the time, and I still do, I had a label. So my idea to Dookie was like, hey, you know, we all do these tracks or whatever have you. And we could put them out on my label, right? Mm -hmm. So that was how it was supposed to go down initially. Mm -hmm. um, then Dookie came back and was like, yo, um, I let Tommy hear it and Tommy let Spin hear it and they want to release it on Quantide. Mm. So okay. that's how that record ended up being released on Quantide. And then Dookie came back and Tommy came back and said, hey, don't you got a remix or don't you got a version of, of, of Dookie's record? I'm like, yeah, I say, but, you know, 
I was going to put it out, but then y'all put it out on y'all label, so it's just sitting. So mm-hmm. it, he was like, send it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how the remix EP came about. Okay. Um, you know, with the original version, uh, they put my version on it. Then did a, another remix of it that sounds slightly different um, from the version that, you know, Dookie did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if Cut's version is on the EP. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, that's how that came about. And actually, me and Dookie have another record that really we made before that record. Um, that was supposed to come out on Quantize, but it, it never came out. Um so yeah, me and me and Dookie actually have a few records together. Okay. That's the only one that ever came out. Mm-hmm. But me and Dookie have about three or four records together. Okay. Um, the yeah. Ed Ramsey record came about. Um, I had a track. Mm-hmm. Um, I had submitted that track to uh, Mr. Eclectic, who owns Pasqua Records. Mm, okay. Um, Baltimore Cat, mm-hmm. um, Pasquale Records essay is, 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 he's doing numbers right now. He's always uh, in the top 10, you know, Afro charts. Um, he, he really doing his thing and is a good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had submitted a track to him. Um, he liked it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he sent it to a musician in South Africa to add more music to it. Mm, okay. The track came back. I liked it, but I felt it needed something. Okay. Um, so it just so happened that me and Ed met up at a Quantize party. Uh, mm-hmm. October of last year, September of last year, something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we were just talking. You know, we, like I said, I already knew Ed. Uh, we see each other at parties all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, Ed! And it's just, just off the cuff. I had never, I had, I didn't have any preconceived notion to put Ed on a track. Mm-hmm. But when I saw him, I was like, yeah, that's what the track need right there. Mm, so, okay. you know, we rapping. I'm like, yo, Ed, I got this track. You try, you know, see what you can do with it. Mm-hmm. So he was like, yeah, send it to me. Mm-hmm. So I sent him the track. And, you know, what you hear is, you know, dance party. Uh, you know, okay. he sent back and it, it's a beautiful track. Yes. Um, we're, supposed to do re- we're supposed to do a remix pack to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, me and Maurice was talking. Uh, we was talking about, you know, getting remixes from Jihad, um, Coflo, mm-hmm. um, Oscar P., uh, you know, that hasn't happened yet, uh, but, you know, hopefully, you know, we can get together and uh, put out, you know, uh, a remix pack to that record. Because it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful record. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not necessarily a dance floor banger, which mm-hmm. I'm uh, known for. But, you know, sometimes I try to, you know, do records that, you know, people don't expect me to do. Um, mm-hmm. And that's one of those records. Uh, the record with Richard Burton and Fruity, the remix of I Miss You, uh, mm. is another example. You know, people don't really think of me making soulful house records, you know, that version of soulful house. You know, and I, I just, you know, sometimes I want to do stuff just to say, if I wanted to, I could make those type of records. You know, I just don't want to. Gotcha. So that's how the, the Richard Burton record came about, you know. Mm-hmm. And once again, me and Richard, you know, I just talked to Richard um, Saturday, you okay. know. Um, Richard hit me up. Um, you know, he had took some time to himself for a while. He was like, yo, Ike, I'm ready to get back in the studio. So I'm like, yo, let's do it. But mm-hmm. the crazy thing is, me and Richard have like 10 records mm. sitting on okay. my hard drive. Okay. Um, you know, uh Richard, he, you know, he has an idea. He had hit me up or he had hit Tommy up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he wants to jump in the studio. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, the funny thing, none of them are finished. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah. We just have a bunch of records, you know, that we started uh, that need to be finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Richard, that's my guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, another guy, an incredible voice. Yes. Uh, you know, anything... Yes. 
um, that in that rain that in that Teddy P range yes. that that uh, Richard is going to knock that out. You, you know, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's my guy. Now um, we have like a few minutes left. I want to ask you two questions here. Do you have a okay. pre preference for DJing or producing? And what can we expect from you going forward? Um, well, I'm an I'm a odd person. I'm an Aquarius. Um, so I, I kind of have a dual personality. Okay. So I guess the producer side of me speaks to the side of me that wants to be by myself. Okay. You know, so you know, I get in my studio and it's just me and my and my and my gear, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I get to just you know make music. Nobody else is around. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the stuff you may hear, some of the stuff you may not hear, but it's just you know me secluded in a room by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another side of me though that wants to hear and you know and this is just me and you know you're gonna find it funny it wants to hear women screaming on the dance floor <laughs> <laughs> i dj so <laughs> that's where the dj side of me okay. comes in mm -hmm. and you know i tell people all the time i don't make a lot of like, you know, the big thing now is like, you know, thumb drives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have made some thumb drives and, you know, I've made CDs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing with making CDs and making thumb drives is that you do them, for the most part, in a room by yourself. Mm -hmm. For me, DJing is about, you know, community. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, that that desire to make people dance and mm -hmm. to get that feedback, you know, when, when, when people are feeling it and they, you know, they start whooping and hollering and screaming and, mm -hmm. you know, calling your name and <laughs> shouting and all that type of stuff. I associate DJing with that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, um, which one do I like better mm -hmm. is i guess gonna depend on which mood i'm in okay um sometimes i want to be by myself so i guess that speaks to like the producer side and you know sometimes i want to be in a setting with a room full of people mm -hmm. losing their mind and mm -hmm. you know that speaks to the dj side of me okay. so I, I guess it's like 50 50. okay um like I said, it all depends on, you know, what type of mood I'm in. Uh, but I, I, I will say that the ex I, I guess, you know, DJ make it the edge. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a just go ahead and not play the safe card. Okay. Um, <laughs> DJ ain't gets the edge because nothing is better to me than hearing people scream when like their record comes on mm -hmm. uh, and you know and, and, and you know they giving you the acknowledgement that you know you're really doing your thing mm -hmm. uh, and they're showing you their appreciation by dancing and you know shouting at you and pointing at you and you know um, I have a friend of mine here I, don't, I hope she's not watching because she's going to cuss me out but her name is Renee mm -hmm. uh, when you're really doing your everything Renee will cuss you out <laughs> uh, so yeah you know it's, yeah. it's no better feeling than that yeah. so i would say yeah djing kind of gets the edge mm -hmm. um but yeah. you know it's slightly 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 okay 55 55 to um 45 okay got you hey i understand you know i dj too but matter of fact i'm gonna be djing in um September 16th with Exotic, and I think Tommy Davis. My man Troy, yeah. Huh? Huh? I say DJ and come Exotic from out of Baltimore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. my man Troy. Yeah, Shout yeah, out yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we both we, we we both from the same hood, Cherry Hill. Okay, all right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. let me let me give a few shout outs as we get ready to um, come in for a soft landing. Mike Marcello, or Marcello, I'm not sure how he pronounces it, but. He, he, well, he says some kind of, <laughs> okay, anyway. Then we got Callie Callie, 
um, closet. No, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> uh, who? You said he said what? You, oh, you know Mike Marcello? Mark? No, nah, but what do you say? <laughs> okay, let me get to that <laughs> minute. Then you have <laughs> Broderick C. Pritchett is in the house. Okay. Okay. What's up? What's up? Okay. You really want to know what Mike said? <laughs> yeah, what do you say? He said, I love your show. I am a big fan. I always watch wearing my Princess Leia wig, Crocs, and Hello Kitty thong. <laughs> hey. That's what's anyway. up, though. That, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Hey, listen. Listen. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Listen. Listen. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to get our Disney contract here. Anyway, just, just messing. All right. So, so <laughs> listen. Um, so, so, so we're right really down to the wire here. Um, what can we look forward from you? What can we look forward to from you? And any final thoughts? And how do we support you and follow you? So, um, if you're in the in the in the Baltimore area, me and Tommy, we just did a pop up party yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, Unity the community, um, great turnout. Uh, Househeads, you know, they came through, showed love, free party. Um, you know, we had DJs, myself, Tommy, uh, uh, DJ Mata, and Blue Angel, who was one of those up-and-coming young DJs mm. um, that I talked about trying to nurture. Um, Angel just turned 21 this year. Mm. Um, she's been DJing for about six years now. Mm -hmm. um, really doing her thing. She's going to be DJing um, at the uh, house music on the waterfront. Um, later this month or early next month mm -hmm. with House Cat and uh, so a lot of other DJs. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing like two, three more of those pop-up parties. Mm -hmm. um, me and Tommy are also putting together a festival called Tommy Fest. Um, okay. That's going to be, you know, uh, what, what we're hoping that that's going to be a huge thing uh, that we're going to try to take on tour. Um mm -hmm. We're settling, we're trying to settle on a date. Uh, it was tentatively going to be September the 10th, but mm -hmm. that date didn't work out. Um, so, we, you know, we're trying to make a date for that. Um, but Tommy Fest, you know, it's going to be, um, yeah, that's going to be something special. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to give a whole lot of information right now, but just be on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. um, we have some new records coming out mm -hmm. um, probably within the next month or so. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm working on an EP uh, that's going to be Casper Bernstein. That's an addition to uh, the Sync Mafia stuff. And, um, you know, just be on the lookout. Um, I haven't played in Jersey, though. I'm kind of upset that, you know, mm -hmm. nobody's brought me up there to Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, dirty Jersey. I'm trying to get up there to <laughs> Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got you. <laughs> Y'all done had Troy up there. Uh -huh. Y'all done had Dell up there. Yeah. What's up with your boy? You can't uh -huh. get my boy. You know, somebody, hey, if somebody from Jersey, promoter, mm -hmm. holler at your boy, Castle Bernstein. Okay. I'm trying to come up there to Jersey. Momo. Yeah. Momo got all the pull. Yeah. Momo, yeah. holler at your boy. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also, too, um, Spen was just here last week um, with, uh, yeah, I guess it was not this Saturday, the previous Saturday. At and the house of Yeah? Yeah, with, um, yeah, he was with. Um, with Mike Freak? Well, no, J Jihad. Jihad brought him up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah he was, he was. That was that was Jersey. He left from Jersey and went to New York to the house of yeah. Okay. You, you are absolutely right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a chance to see him, connect with him, which is always good. Yeah. So, wow. Well, listen, um, we're way past the wire, but this was okay. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I was it's fault. okay. I, could, I don't even like to talk, but then sometimes, I, <laughs> I, you know, once I get talking and get started, you know, I just, you know, Implement, you know. Well, listen. Like I said, that that dual personality of mine. You know, I've been told that I have that effect on people, so we're good. <laughs> anyway, if people want to follow, any final thoughts, and if people want to follow you or support you, how do they do it? Yeah, you know, I'm on IG, Casper Bernstein. Um, Can you spell it? Because you know, I misspelled it in the beginning. Yeah, so it's Casper with a K. Like mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. um, going back to the whole. Um, Bootsy Collins thing. Mm -hmm. So it's Casper with a K. Um, Bernstein is spelled B 
U R N, like burn. Mm -hmm. S T E I N. Mm -hmm. The S T I know the I supposed to go before the E, but to me, visually, I thought it looked better with the E before the I. I know it's pedantically incorrect, but that's the way I spell it. P U R N S T E I N. Um. Yeah, you know, just had a quick question. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I I gotta ask this question. Okay, so let's pretend for a minute that Casper Bernstein is not a mm -hmm. common name in our community. Where did the right. Bernstein come from? Well, it's funny that you should ask that. Uh -huh. You said you're over time, yeah, but there's a story to go with that, okay. right? So, if you have time for the story, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> so, Bernstein goes back to when I was doing my hip-hop thing, right? Okay. And I had a group of rappers that I was producing for. Um, my name at the time, and, you know, other freelance stuff that I was doing as far as making beats for rappers in the city and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, my name at that time was Ike Murder, right? Okay. Ike, I-K-E, which most people call me. Mm -hmm. um, and then Murder, mm -hmm. M-U-R-D-A, which is, of course, you know, a, a, a play on, you know, M-U-R-D-E-R. -E right. Um, so, you know, um, I had some connects with the local radio station, you know, and they have hip hop nights on, you know, Sundays. And I was able to, you know, slide them tracks where, you know, they would play, you know, some of my, you know, rap joints or whatever had. Uh, but you know how the producers have like their little, you know, catchphrases in the beginning and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they would always kind of cut out where it said Ike Murder for obvious reasons. I'm in a city mm -hmm. where, you know, murder is out of control. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not something that you probably want to have on commercial radio. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, look, I, I, I got to do something about this. Um, I got to come up with a different name that, that that's more easy on radio stations, you mm -hmm. know, to, you know, let slide, you know, when your track coming on or whatever. Had. So I'm brainstorming, trying to come up with a name. I was working with this rap group. Um that was called New Money. Now, you may say, hey, that sounds a lot like Young Money. Mm -hmm. But we had this before Young Money was a thing. Mm -hmm. It was called New Money. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, so I'm, I'm, the, I'm the head of this group. I'm the producer. We're talking about money. What's the name for a banker? I say, okay, you know, banker name, you know, bankers are like, you know, typically when you think of a banker, you think of somebody from the Jewish community and stuff like that. I know that's a bad thing to say now and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. just brainstorming, that was my mindset. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I'm looking through, you know, all these different names, uh, last names, you know, for um, people of Jewish descent. And I came upon Bernstein. But it was court spelled, you know, the correct B -E -R. way. B-E-R-N, mm -hmm. you know, S. T I E N. Mm -hmm. so I was like, I, I like that, but let mm -hmm. me switch it up a little bit. So I changed the B E to B U, and like I said, because I like the way S T E I N looked over S T I E N, that's how Bernstein came about. Okay, all right. Listen, um, we're 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 gonna come in for a crash landing, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do people follow you support you keep up with you one more time um yeah instagram casper bernstein of mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. um now on facebook you could look me up by casper bernstein but you're actually going to come up on a page that says ike lee mm -hmm. uh, which is my first name and middle name mm -hmm. uh, but if you put in casper bernstein it will take you to um uh, that ike lee page uh, as far as music is concerned, you can go to Tidal, Spotify, iMusic, YouTube. Um, if you put in Casper Bernstein, the music will come up. If you put in Sync Mafia, you know, of course, the Sync Mafia tracks will come up also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, um, Bandcamp, okay. 
Okay. Uh, uh, if you're a DJ, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you're looking for, you know, the music that you can't find on track source or beat port, mm-hmm. um, you're always welcome to go to um, my Bandcamp page or SoundCloud. All right. And that's also going to be Casper Bernstein. Fantastic. Hey, Mr. Bernstein, thank you so much for thank spending you, thank time you with you. us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to be looking. And tell your producers I apologize for going over the time limit. <laughs> Even though that's more your fault than my fault because you're a facilitator. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your input. <laughs> hey, listen, it's a real pleasure. I knew this was going to be a good one when we first had our first conversation. Um, you know, we obviously got to maintain contact. I'm going to be in Baltimore September 16th. I'm going to be playing with Exotic. I think Tommy Davis is going to be on the bill. I already told them, you know, they put out this thing saying that, you know, coming from Jersey, they're going to send me back home in an ambulance and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's, <laughs> that's Troy's Barnum and Bailey way of promoting. Which is so, fine. You know, that's his fine. thing right there. Yeah. It, it's fine because, you know, <laughs> I have him in prayer. Anyway, mm-hmm. so we're going to be good. So, hey, listen, thanks again. Listen, anything you got, let me know. Tag me, okay. hit me up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm, this is not, this is the opening of the relationship. How about that? Yes, yes, you know, yes, so. yes, indeed. Yeah, so. I'll definitely see you on the 16th when you come down. So I'm going to be there okay. you know, at that particular party. So I'll, I'll definitely see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could chop it up, probably mm-hmm. some more okay. uh, at that point. Okay. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, Tommy and Troy don't beat you up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I got to tell you, you know what's exciting about it? I think it's going to be three or four against one, but that's okay. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I'm, I'm yeah, going to bring the heat with me. <laughs> you're, the, you're the outside guy, so you know, it's nothing, you know, you're the outside guy, so they're going to definitely gang up on you. Which is good. Because then this, <laughs> hey, listen, you know, you see, here, here's, here's, here's the fun part about it. They're going to all be working together, conspiring, and then they're going to say to themselves, this is not working. This is not working. Anyway, so. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to give you a pro tip. You know? Okay. Mm-hmm. One thing about Baltimore, mm-hmm. Baltimoreans can't stick together but for so long. <laughs> So okay. if you know how to work that, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you know how to work that and, the, you know, the whole thing about divide and conquer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's a pro tip I just gave you. You can send me the check in the mail. <laughs> um, <laughs> divide and conquer. That's okay. the way you win. All right. <laughs> hey, listen, thank you so much. Callie Callie, thanks for joining us, too. Holly Rock, what's up? Thanks for coming on board. Hey, folks, listen, we're going to go right to our next segment, which is the uh, Shazam Free Zone. We're going to play all brand new music. And just uh, you're going to get the chance to say if you like it. We, we're we're going to play it and say it. And you can kind of hang out if you'd like, if you got to go and understand that. And we're just going to play some uh, music. And again, I'll keep, uh, I'm going to keep Tommy and them in prayer for when I come down there, all right? <laughs> all right. Hey, <laughs> okay. man, thanks for having hey, me. I'll thank, see you soon. Thank you. All right. Take all right. Care. All right. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on, let's break. You got to go. 